Okay, so thank you very much for this invitation. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure and to, to, to be there. And it's late for, for me. Uh, I learned that for some of you, it's uh, very early, and probably for some of you, it's a it's a somewhat time. But in fact, it's, doing math, uh, the day evening is beautiful. Uh, and it's, it's a nice place to, to discuss mathematics. So uh, um, I prepared something which is. Uh, uh, there will be there will be some theorems at the end, but those theorems are, are old uh, if they are, and they are not fully written yet. I mean, there, there is an old version on archive. But you see the date; it's uh, 2012, and we are still revising the manuscript. And it's, every time we revise it, it grows. So probably it's an endless task. But we'll see. And so what I want is to to reach uh, this this material. But uh, before that, may, maybe spend more time explaining. Uh, why I, uh, we were interested in, in doing that. So here is the abstract, and I skip it. But uh, in the abstract, you'll see that I'm going to discuss heights, Arakov geometry, uh, non Archimedean geometries, which will be motivated by uh, questions of Arakov geometry. And then uh, the end is about real forms and, and currency in non Archimedean geometry. And so mixing real numbers and non Archimedean numbers. And, and then a bit about neutralized line models and complex geometry. So first is about height. Um, so the, the height, uh, sometimes described I, I, as naive, uh, the height of a point is just a, a way of measuring its complexity. And uh, if you take a, a point, uh, a rational point of the projective space with homogeneous coordinates, x1, xm, and you can choose them co-prime and integer, and then the height is usually just logarithm of the supremum of, of, of those numbers. And with a non fortunate typo here, it's xn and not xj. Uh, one uh, very important uh, feature is the North Code property that uh, once you bound the degree and the height, and you get oddly finitely many numbers. And for when the degree is one, it's very it's, it's obvious on, on the definition because you bound to the, the homogeneous coordinates, so you, you bound the number of points. Uh, one uh, one stuff that which is built into the, the, the machine of heights is, is good functorial properties, which uh, at, at this level is very uh, elementary looking. So you take a rational map from a projective space to, to another one, and it's given by a homogeneous polynomials, uh, F not FM, in uh, n plus one coordinates. And it's not always well defined because if a point uh, cancels all of those polynomials, and you won't be able to evaluate this, evaluate the map at, at this point, but otherwise you can. And uh, the first uh, inequality is that when you evaluate uh, the map at such a point, you just multiply the height by some constant, by the constant d, which is a degree, and maybe you add some error term. And if you have a closed subvariety, which does not be, meet the indetermination locus, so x intercept bf is empty, then uh, you have an inequality in the other direction. So the height of the image is greater than d times the height of the initial point minus some constant. Just let me mention that uh, in some applications, it could be important to, to know something about these constants uh, cf and cx. But uh, for the moment, I will uh, content myself with this inequality. So on, on page seven, so on which to page eight. So then uh, what they did uh, almost uh, 100 years ago is to transform this weak functionality properties into a height machine uh, that becomes uh, quite uh, more sophisticated. Uh, it's not obviously related to, to varieties in some projective space, but rather to varieties with uh, equipped with a line model L. Uh, and uh, Usually, if, if x is inside some PN, uh, L will be the, the line model that gives you the, the so called O of one line model that gives you uh, basically functions, homogeneous functions of, of degree one on, on x. And then uh, to, to, to x and L, uh, they define the high, height functions, HL, uh, on the algebraic points. And for every morphism, uh, an equality of heights. So the height of f of x is the height of x with respect to the pullback line model except that this is not true. 
because we had unspecified constants, uh, CF and CX before. And so all these equalities do not really hold, they only hold up to a bounded function. And so this functorial uh, equality is up to a bounded error term. So for some applications, it's really innocuous, especially if you look at points of large height, it could be, it could be nice. But if you want to uh, know what the height of some specific point is, then uh, it's not sufficient. And there were various ways in, in the second half of the 20th century to, to get rid of this uh, indeterminacy. And uh, for example, uh, John Tate and um, Joseph Silverman um, uh, introduced uh, dynamical heights. So you, you assume that you are given uh, on your variety X uh, uh, a morphism F and uh, you have uh, your line model L is such that when you pull back L uh, by F, uh, you get L to some power Q greater than two. And then there is a unique way of normalizing the height functions so, such that the equality for, uh, at least for this morphism is a precise equality. And uh, in the case of uh, so dynamical systems, and then, uh, the interest of during this normalization is yeah, you get a, a characterization of the pre-periodic points, the point whose four orbit is finite, or so ultimately you, you cycle to finitely many points, and then they are characterized by the vanishing of the height. And if you consider an abelian variety and some morphism such as multiplication by two, and assume that an example, then uh, what this function is, is called a neuronted height. It's a positive quadratic form on the point of the abelian variety tensored with, with R. And it, it's well known that this tool, this tool uh, is crucial in half of the proof of, of the model Bayes theorem, for example. Uh, another way where you see precise normalization is when you look at the Mahler measure of, of a point. So it's even uh, more elementary than the previous case. You just take the point of, of P1 uh, and you don't look at point at infinity. So you take a point of the form of one with homogeneous coordinates, which are one uh, comma T. And then it's known that the height of this point is uh, one divided by the degree of the minimal polynomial times the logarithm of the Mahler measure of the polynomial. So you get an expression, which is, so you have the degree in the denominator and one, uh, the logarithm of some integer, the leading coefficient, and uh, something which is the sum over all roots of uh, a function, which is a, uh, essentially log of absolute value of, of the complex number if you are outside of the circle and is zero if you are inside the circle. And for example, on this formula, you see that, uh, well, you see from this formula, you, you can see that if the height is zero, then uh, that imposes that the leading coefficient is one, and then all the conjugates are inside the unit, unit circle and by the unit disk, sorry. And by Kronecker, it means that uh, either t is zero or t is a root of unity. And uh, in this context, I should also recall the lemma conjecture. Uh, which makes sense because you have a precise normalization here. So the height of, of some point T should be at least some constant divided by the degree of, of, the, of the point, so the degree of F. So it means that so this should be universally bounded from below unless the point is zero or root of unity. Uh, this conjecture is, uh, is open, but uh, it's known that there are uh, uh, first of all, a, a weak version uh, due to Dobrovolsky uh, up to some logarithmic uh, additional term. And there is also a recent uh, uh, version of uh, an analogous inequality uh, called a uh, conjecture by Schinzel and Satzenhaus and put by, by Dimitrov. Um, think. So, I missed the title. So um, in this context, what Fekete and, and Seke did is replace the, the disk by some compact set and replace this function log sup of uh, number and one by, by the potential uh, of, the, of the compact set. So this is a function uh, on C, which is zero uh, on the compact, harmonic 
uh, hard side of the compact and uh, goes roughly like a logarithm at, at infinity. And what it corresponds is that if you view, uh, if you are inside the, the Riemann sphere, and the North Pole is the point at infinity, and then you have your compact set. What it means that if you are you are putting uh, your contact into uh, some conducting material uh, of metal, and the rest is supposed to be empty, and you put a unit charge at infinity, and then it, you get the, the capacity of, a, of the, this electric system. And uh, from, from this function, uh, what, what happens is that GK is very close to, to the function that appears into the into the definition of the Mahler measure. So you it would be it would give uh, another height function relative to the compact K, and uh, which would correspond to other uh, geometric uh, questions. For example, you could ask and forget and so you ask and solve whether uh, you have uh, infinitely many points. It, all of those conjugates uh, uh, belong to the compact set K and, uh, and which are also integer. And uh, what Fekete and Zegger proves is that if the capacity of the compact is too small, if it's smaller than one, then uh, you have only have finitely many points satisfying this condition. And if the compact has a great capacity greater than one, when essentially you have infinitely many points. So it's another instance where uh, having a precise normalization of the height uh, allows to solve uh, uh, questions which mix uh, uh, number theory and geometry. So uh, Arakanov geometry was invented in, in the uh, at the end of, well, Arakelov uh, did his first work in, in 1774, and then it was in, in dimension one, and it was uh, uh, retaken by Faltings and uh, Gillet and Soule uh, you know, around uh, 1985 to, say, 1995. And uh, it furnishes uh, high-tech machinery to, to specify the height uh, in a fully functional way, uh, but uh, in a way which is also geometric. And so uh, instead of looking at projective varieties and line models, one will look at uh, schemes of other integers, line models on that schemes, and Hermitian metrics on, on the complex line model over the, this manifold. So the, the, the relation with, with the classical theory uh, is that you could take uh, x uh, inside uh, the projective space uh, of a z. And uh, on this scheme, you have the classical O of one line model. And x would just be defined by uh, equations uh, zero, f, f, n, and the, the fg would be polynomial with integer coefficients. And uh, on O of one, you also have the Fubini study metric, which is a very classical object from uh, complex algebraic geometry or analytic geometry, which uh, allows uh, to, to measure uh, the size of a homogeneous polynomial uh, at the point X. So usually if you want to, to measure that, uh, you could try to evaluate the homogeneous polynomial at the point, but it doesn't make sense because when you multiply the homogeneous coordinates, you multiply this by the multiplication factor, factor to the to degree. So you just divide by, say, uh, uh, say, the norm of the point or the coordinates of the point divided by the degree of, of f. If you, if you do something like that, uh, you, get, you, you have expressions which are uh, well defined. And in some sense, the classical theory of Bayes heights is just uh, the particular case of Arakelov geometry with this, uh, these functions, except that the, the norm is not a, a precise norm, it's, but it, it's a minor uh, difference. Um, this is essentially due to, to Faltings uh, that once you have uh, such, a, such triples, so uh, X, uh, L, and norms, uh, there are uh, functions which are absolutely well defined and that apply to all closed subschemes of X. So you don't only have heights of points, but you have heights of everything lying on X. And uh, 
in a scheme of a Z, you have uh, a classical uh, definition that you, your scheme X over spec Z. Then you, you here you have the generic point of spec Z, which is, which is spec Q. And there you, you will have a variety of a, of a rational, but you also have a variety of a, a F2 um, uh, and all of a, all prime numbers. And then you have varieties, which are uh, in the language of the previous slide, are just uh, the, the variety of a F2, F3, FP, et cetera, uh, defined by the reduction module two, three, et cetera, of the polynomial that define uh, curly X. And then uh, you have two types of. Uh, so I need to find my tools. And why do they disappear? Because they are here. So I need it. I want to go out. So you have two types of uh, varieties. You have those uh, which are fully vertical, such as a variety there. And then uh, the height, which is defined uh, in this matter, is essentially the degree of the variety here. So you have a variety in some protective space of FP and you have this degree, except that the degree with respect to the corresponding line model. And uh, it's essentially the degree. You have just a, a multiplication factor a logarithm of prime number. And in the other direction, you have schemes which are this way, which are horizontal. They are subjective of a, of a spec Z and they correspond to uh, closed subvarieties of the generic fiber of a, of a Q. And then what you get when you take the, the closure of, of something over the generic fiber, so something that will be horizontal, then you get uh, essentially the height, what we want to call the height of the generic fiber. And uh, in, in some uh, context, the height is normalized so, so that what you define by, by induction, uh, something which looks like a C1 hat of L bar to the power dimension of z plus one uh, in divine, which is a notation like that, which is inspired by uh, intersection theory, is would be this number. So essentially the height, and here is the degree of the variety in the generic fiber, and this is just for normalization. So um, what perspective do, do we get? Uh, doing this, uh, using this machinery, uh, then we get that uh, we transfer the question uh, of having appropriate uh, heights functions into having appropriate models or appropriate metrics. So, and there is some hope that uh, having a, the question of finding good models of varieties or good metrics on my models is a question uh, which is a, of a more geometric nature and maybe can give a more no precise answer. And in the context of abelian varieties regarding the neuronted height, uh, the models are given by the neuron models and the metrics are classical, but just a matrix who, whose first charm form is invariant by translation. And it's exactly the, the matrix that you can build on the line model from the complex uh, de definition, uh, complex point of view on abelian varieties and the line models, uh, for example, in the context of the Abel Humbert theorem. Um, regarding the question of, of Fekete Jege, uh, Rumeli uh, uh, introduced a potential theory on curves uh, and periodic capacities to have a question of, of Kronecker type or Fekete Jege type, but introducing compact sets uh, at, at local places. And in algebraic dynamics, uh, this uh, business could be useful, but it's not so useful. Uh, because it's very rare that you have some good reduction process that, for example, it would, it would be necessary that you really have a morphism uh, over the integers intending, uh, extending the morphism on the uh, generic fiber. And this is quite rare. And therefore, uh, one still needs an approximation process of the same type as uh, Tate, Tate, Tate's process. And this is uh, done by the theory of adelic matrix of, of Shosan. Um, and in some sense, uh, this approximation process, uh, yeah, well, it, it's, it's, it's very useful in practice, but uh, still it, it may lack uh, some uh, geometric definition. For example, uh, 
if you apply this uh, geometry, this, this limit process on abelian varieties with bad reduction, it, it's very it's quite complicated to understand what you get. But if you do uh, uh, non archimedean geometry on, on the non archimedean uniformization of the abelian varieties, then you are supposed to see uh, uh, what happens in a cleaner way. Um, just to give a uh, for, for an additional motivation of arachnid of heights um, and statements which are uh, impossible to to give if you don't have those heights, except in particular contexts uh, such as uh, uh, dynamical algebraic dynamics, uh, is that you you have inequalities that relate the height of the variety with the heights. Of the points. So this is the height of points uh, of small x, and this is the height of varieties. And this is a general equality. And essentially, essentially the, the, the height of the points of the variety are always greater than uh, the height of the, of the variety, except that there could be uh, uh, sub varieties close the varieties where the inequality doesn't, doesn't hold. So you, you remove them and you might be obliged to remove infinitely many varieties. So it means that this complicated supinf means that whenever you fix, uh, epsi, uh, you fix uh, epsilon, uh, there exists y such that uh, for all x in uh, x minus y, uh, the height of small x is greater than the height of capital X minus epsilon. And uh, whenever there is such an equality like this, uh, you can use it as a variational principle. And Spiro, Ilmo, Zhang did that. And from this inequality proved uh, an equidistribution theorem for, for height of points, which are close to this lower bound. And uh, in turn, this equidistribution theorem was the cornerstone of, of the proof by Ilmo and Zhang and the, of the Bogomolov conjecture. That says uh, that, that generalizes the Manin Mumford conjecture uh, for sub varieties of abelian varieties. And roughly, that says uh, the Manin Mumford conjecture says that if you have a curve in its Jacobian, then you have only finitely many torsion points on it. And when the, the torsion points are exactly the points uh, with no wanted height uh, zero, and what the Boganov conjecture says is that you have finitely many points uh, whose height is, well, it says that uh, uh, away from those finitely many points, the height is uh, bounded from below by a strictly positive constant, which is just this, the height of the curve. So uh, ending this, this part with uh, motivations for, for, for non accumulated geometries. Uh, first, of, first of all, it could be uh, just uh, purely philo philosophical uh, to, to put non Archimedean places exactly on the same footing as Archimedean ones. So, this is uh, what some people do, but in reverse, uh, th there is a lot of work uh, trying to, to put the Archimedean, Archimedean place on the same footing as the non Archimedean ones and doing algebra the schemes of F1 and, and so on. So here I want to do exactly the, the opposite. I, I want to, uh, I, I think that uh, complex analysis and real analysis is much more developed than uh, algebraic geometry. So one should be able to, 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 do, to have tools from analysis into, to do algebra. It could be useful to, to do that when you have bad reductions and uh, no good models. Um, for example, one of my hopes uh, is that, uh, uh, well, it's not only a hope, but uh, it would be interesting to, to use analytic, non Archimedean analytic geometry on Shimura varieties to understand uh, the, the heights uh, instead of uh, constructing uh, in a difficult way uh, models of, of Shimura varieties. Um, so it could be interesting for, it's also interesting for, for equidistribution theorems. 
And there are also other aspects of Archimedean geometry that lead naturally to, to non-Archimedean geometry uh, is that in some sense, uh, as Konsevich, Soibelman, and Berkovic, and other people, um, so for example, Fav, Bunson, and Johnson observe, in some sense, uh, the, the, the limit, the synthetic limit of Archimedean geometry is non-Archimedean geometry. So you could, one could understand the generations of of Archimedean uh, phenomena uh, in a non-Archimedean way. Uh, in some sense, it is, this is what uh, non-standard analysis claims. Um, from, from complex numbers, you naturally build a, a field of non-standard complex numbers, which is uh, of a non-Archimedean nature. So uh, let's discuss a bit uh, non-Archimedean geometries. So there are building blocks, and uh, I have two columns that explain the building blocks from of algebraic geometry and those of non-Archimedean geometry. For if algebras, usually algebraic geometry is about finitely generated algebras of a field, and non-Archimedean geometry looks at uh, algebras which are uh, quotients of ring of power series which converge, uh, which whose coefficients uh, converge to zero. Uh, algebraic geometry defines the space, the spectrum of an algebra and growth index as a set of all prime uh, ideals with some Zariski topology. And uh, there is analogously an, an analytic spectrum of an affinity algebra, and which consists in, in multiplicative seminorms on the algebra A. And uh, another way to, to describe this, it, you can view uh, prime ideals as uh, equivalence classes of morphisms to fields. Uh, if you have two, two morphisms from, uh, from two fields, uh, K and L, and if you can uh, uh, build a composite extension such that the two morphisms from A to E uh, coincide, then you claim that uh, those morphisms are equivalent. And if you do that, you get precisely the prime angles of A. And if you do the same job by looking uh, with looking at morphisms to complete valued fields because you are doing uh, analytic geometry. So you, you need to, to work with complete fields and then you will get uh, the set of all uh, multiplicative seminars. Uh, so what, uh, what Berkovic did is that uh, defining uh, the analytic spectrum say, as all multiplicative seminars. So I just recall the, the definitions here to, to be clear. So it just, uh, a function with positive values so the seminorm applied in the sum is smaller than the sum of the seminorms. It will become an Archimedean at the end in, in some cases, and you will get a supremum of P of F, P of G, but don't claim it is. The fact that the, supreme, the seminorm is multiplicative is that the seminorm of the product is a product, um, I think. Uh, and you also uh, doing uh, algebraic uh, analytic geometry or K over some ground field. So uh, on the ground field, you ask that the seminorm restricts to the absolute value that you, you are given. And on the set of multiplicative seminorms, uh, which is a spectrum of like in the Gelfand uh, theorem, uh, there is a natural topology, uh, which is a topology of uh, Pointwise convergence. So you, you just ask that all uh, evaluation maps from, so it's, these are maps from uh, uh, whenever you have uh, you have f in A, uh, it's not f max plus to p of f, it's p max to p of f. So uh, for all f in A, uh, you have an evaluation map from p, which maps a seminorm p to, to the value of the seminorm at, at f. And you ask that all of these seminars, these maps are continuous, and it gives you some topology. And uh, the point of view is to, to look at those seminars P not as functions on the algebra, but really as points on space. And so one will uh, view uh, the value of the seminar P at the function F as the absolute value of the function F at the point P. So it is a reverse in reversing the point of view, and uh, that's it, which will be important. So the 
uh, I, I skip a whole part of the theory, which uh, will uh, which will teach you how to glue uh, analytic spectra uh, together to get varieties which are not uh, which are more complicated than, than varieties that, that analytic spaces uh, build from affinoid uh, algebras, but uh, uh, it's not very relevant today with me. And uh, I will also skip one uh, important property is how to define new functions on your algebra, for example, analytic functions on open set. But uh, this will be enough for, for me today. So the interest of, of this, this, those spaces is that uh, the topology is quite good. Uh, the spaces you get, we get, we, I will uh, describe them in an example later, are locally contractible, they are locally compact. And uh, if you try to do uh, uh, analytic geometry of a, a CP, for example, so the completion of a rate closure of QP, then you get something which is definitely not locally compact and uh, which, is, which is totally disconnected, so not locally contractible and so on. We will see that there is a, an interesting interaction with the real numbers. And uh, those spaces also have a topology and they also have a gross topology. topology. And uh, gross and topologies are is what happened when you try to, to glue compact sets. And uh, when you want to glue uh, open sets, you have topology. Uh, and it's useful to, uh, to have both, uh, both topologies. And indeed, there are many other theories. And so the, the naive uh, theory has not enough local compactness. It's very good when you work over QP and you do something which is relative to QP, but it's really insufficient here. The theory of state, uh, would, which only looks at CP points, but forgets about the topology and only looks about the gross and topology, has not enough points, so you don't see really what happens. There is a theory by Renault uh, uh, built on formal schemes, but then uh, one really lacks a space uh, on which uh, one can do analysis uh, on geometry. The space exists, but it's not. Uh, it's not very uh, visible. And there is also a, a re more recent theory by, by Huber, but this one uh, has too many points for, for, for what you want to do. So, and so in some sense, uh, the Berkovich theory, which were, was developed roughly here, is exactly what, what we need. So just me, let me give you an example. So uh, we'll just, the, the only example that people can, can do is the affine line. So, uh, we want to look at seminoms on uh, the ring of polynomials in one variable. And so uh, Berkovich claims that there are four sorts of points. The first one uh, are just given by, you take a, a point in the, in the field K, A, and, uh, and you look at a seminom that takes a polynomial and takes the value at A and the absolute value. So you have a point zero, you have a point for one, uh, maybe you have a point for, I think I will pretend k is qp bar. So I will take a uh, point p here. Now what one can do is you can uh, look at the point, the, the disk uh, of uh, center uh, zero and, and radius r, and you can look at the Gauss norm on, on this disk. So it will, it will mean uh, that you take uh, uh, p, uh, p d of f, in some sense, it's just the supremum of f of a uh, for all a uh, there, but you really need to take the supremum uh, on the algebraic closure, not, not over QP. And it's, if you expand uh, this the polynomial f uh, as coefficient, uh, cn, tn, then it's just a supremum of uh, absolute value of cn uh, r to the n. And it's not trivial that it is a, uh, it's trivial that it is a seminorm, but it's an even a norm if R is positive, but it's not trivial that it is a multiplicative and this is a content of, uh, of the Gauss theorem. And so we have a lot of, uh, of seminorms uh, and I will draw them. And we have a, a line of seminorms. Uh, and here I will write zero and one. Uh, and when could, could, one could uh, go on with this line. 
in this line, uh, I, uh, I, I used both rational disk and irrational disk uh, according to R be, being uh, so, uh, rational, uh, P, P to some rational or, or being really a real number. But if you look at both points of both types, you get uh, these segments. But you could also start from the point one and look at the disk from one. And then you have disks, uh, you, have, you have this at the, the point P, it's not a well place, but okay. Um, and then you can uh, grow the disk. But what happens is that when, you re when you've reached uh, the disk of uh, center zero and radius one, uh, it's also equal to the disk of center one and radius one because of non Archimedean property. And so you, you get that your line, uh, which was supposed to go uh, from one, and meets the initial line there. And then uh, we'll, uh, draw the point P at some also point. And when you start from a point P, it, it will do the same. It will reach the initial line, but exactly at the disk of center zero and uh, radius one over P, and then it will go. And so uh, what you can also do that with, with P squared, which, uh, if, um, I don't know where it is. Uh, Say so let's do p plus p squared, we, which will be there, go there, and p squared will probably, probably be there, and it would be disk of center zero and we're just one over p squared. And uh, you get something which is uh, a kind of tree and which is very branched because uh, you can you have a uh, countably many branches at countably at a dense countably countably dense set of points. So it's it's very. Uh, it's a tree, uh, but it's very hairy in some sense. Um, and uh, page 26. And here is a nice picture of this tree when you draw it uh, on the plane, uh, taken from the paper by, by Roshovsky and and, Loza and Kuhn. And uh, uh, so here's the, the, the proof that this, this projective line, uh, Dakovich, uh, actually embeds in the, in the plane. And it's a uh, it's an object which is well known in uh, in topology. It's called the Wajemski uh, dendrite. It's some kind of universal space uh, which uh, uh, topologists uh, like to, to study. Ne nevertheless, uh, the point of view of uh, Berkovich fits very well with Renault's approach. For example, when we have a, a formal scheme or say a scheme of aspect Z like before, but uh, I will do it uh, over the, the ring of uh, the valuation ring of the field K. So then uh, assume I, I have a generic fiber, uh, which is an analytic space, but uh, there is also a special fiber and there is a map from the generic fiber to the specialized, to the, to the special fiber. And uh, there is also a very important uh, process, which, is, which has been understood by Berkovich, uh, and which is very important, especially when you have bad reduction, because then you would have a complicated special fiber with many, uh, with, with many components and many interest intersections. But what Berkovich proved is that for each of these components, there is a specific point in the space, so here in my picture, there are two points. And related to this intersection point, there is a real segment. So it means that from this picture, and then if you had a three by three intersection, you would have to draw uh, uh, two, two dimensional simplices and so on. So just from the combinatorics of the spatial fiber of this stuff, one sees in a very concrete way inside the analytic space of, of Berkovich, uh, some uh, some something some object that uh, is usually called a skeleton, and which is a, a polyhedron inside the analytic space, and this is uh, the one reason for which I say that those spaces uh, have a nice interaction with real numbers because we we see real objects uh, from topology which are which are nice which are skeletal, and also uh, Berkovich proved that. Uh, there is a retraction from the generic fiber, so this analytic space, onto the skeleton. So this is why uh, those spaces are, are well behaved. They, they are very hairy trees, but you can contract the tree. So the time goes too fast. 
and rather than have prepared too much stuff. So I will, uh, uh, okay, no, no, it should be nice. Okay, in 10 minutes, don't, don't pay attention to the number of pages below. So now I think uh, I can try to say a word about uh, how to define real forms and currents in an archimedian geometry. And the, the motivation, uh, maybe uh, uh, it, it was only implicit, but uh, let me just say that, for, for example, our record of geometry is full of currents and, and real forms and, and differential geometry of that, that kind. So uh, it comes from tropical geometry. Uh, when I have an analytic space of a field, uh, which will always be called K and uh, will be uh, assumed to be a non archimedian and complete, uh, I will consider uh, tropicalization maps, which are morphisms from X to, to the torus, which is the analytic torus, but you, it's not necessary to, to pay attention to that. It's just given by N functions on X, which are holomorphic in the sense I did not describe, and invertible, they don't vanish uh, anywhere. And from uh, this F, what I can do is I can evaluate the functions F1, Fn at some uh, at points uh, of the space and can take the absolute value. And uh, because we prefer addition to multiplication, I take the logarithm. And so I get, one gets a continuous map from the analytic space to, to the real, real space Rn just by, uh, by evaluation. So this is something which is, uh, which was studied by uh, Gelfand, Kapranov, and Zelevinsky over the complex number called uh, Amoebas. And here uh, we have uh, non Archimedean uh, And uh, it was shown uh, by Gary Groves in the 80s and uh, in this context by Kapranov and Eisendler and Lindt uh, around 2000. That, for example, if X is compact, then the tropicalization of X is not a complicated sp space. It's not a number like uh, people. Uh, uh, have in, in complex term analysis, but it's a compact uh, polyhedral subspace of R, and its dimension is just uh, smaller than the, the dimension of the initial space. And so it's another way of uh, having interactions between uh, uh, analytic spaces and uh, real geometry is just by looking at these tropicalizations and uh, very useful. Maybe you've seen uh, the definition of like Kapranov, and you see that sometimes people don't take the f drop of x, but closure of f drop of x. And this is because they don't use Bakovich spaces. But, uh, if I claim that uh, those tropicalization maps are important, uh, and which I do, uh, I will also uh, use this to, to define smooth functions on analytic spaces. And the idea is that, that moments are, are nice maps, are analytic maps in non archimedian geometry. And I can take the C infinity functions on the real numbers. And if I compose a C infinity function on the real numbers with a tropicalization map, I will claim that I get a smooth function. So, and uh, there are a lot of smooth functions on spaces. So one, there are, there are technical assumptions that the space is separated and it's locally, it's reasonable. It has locally enough philomorphic functions. Um, forget about this. And then there is a stone by theorem. Uh, theorem. The smooth functions are dense in the smooth functions, in the continuous function for, for the compact open topology, uniform functions uh, on compacts. And uh, it's the same if you look at C infinity functions with compact support. And if the space is paracompact, uh, then you have uh, smooth partitions, you even have smooth partitions of unity. Anyway, this compara compactness uh, assumption is, is a bit subtle in uh, Berkovich geometry. Uh, if the base field K is something like CP, uh, if it has a, a countable dense subset, then almost all spaces are para compact. But if uh, K is uh, the field of Laurent power series, uh, over the complex numbers, then, uh, uh, for example, if you take P2 and uh, you remove one, one point, uh, uh, 
uh, you get something which is not not anymore para compact. So anyway, this, this is a, an important assumption, and sometimes it, it's uh, annoying. Uh, okay, we need differential forms, and uh, those differential forms are uh, provided by the berezin lagardac supercalculus. And so it comes from an analogy that on complex numbers, we have pluralistic harmonic functions. On real numbers, we have convex functions. Uh, on, for, on, for complex analysis, there is a Morgan pair operators, uh, operator, and there is a real Morgan pair operator, which is slightly different. Here, you di differentiate with both the complex uh, and the holomorphic and the anti holomorphic variable. And then you only have the, the real variable. So here, you have two n variables, and on the real, you have, you have n. And so while in uh, complex analysis, you can do differential calculus with holomorphic and anti-holomorphic variables, on the real numbers, you need to, to have some surface calculus, which means that you totally uh, formally uh, take the tensor product of two copies of the differential forms. So it means that really what you do is you take one copy of the differential forms with, and you index, to, you, you write them by, with D prime, and you take another copy with, and you write them with two double primes. And then you can do a differential geometry as usual. You can take D prime of this, you will differentiate the functions alpha, alpha, and you will add some D prime in front of that. You can also take D double prime, you will add some D double prime, but you still will do differentiation, differentiation with the same variables. And it's very nice that if you do that and you do a D prime, D double prime to the end, you get exactly the real Mont pair operator. So this uh, totally algebraic business that might, might look uh, strange and unreasonable, but in fact, it gives you naturally the, the operators, the, the operators that uh, complex uh, geometers, uh, real geometers use. And then uh, from, from now on, uh, we just uh, take differential forms, super, super forms on, on the tropicalization and we pull them back formally on the space. Meaning that locally I start from objects which are an open set, a moment and a super forms on the real space. And uh, I define a formally uh, F star alpha. And then it's uh, more or less standard to, to glue these objects into sheaves. And uh, the first proposition that showed that uh, what we get is reasonable. If, if, for example, if you have two moments which have nothing to do, but uh, F-trop is G-trop. So they have this two, two sets of functions which takes the same absolute values. Then when you pull back the forms, you get the same thing. Also, if you pull back one form and uh, and you get zero, then essentially uh, what you had to pull back was zero. So you don't lose anything. And just formally from the uh, uh, Lagardac business, we get uh, uh, differentiations. Uh, one, one important stuff is to, to be able uh, to integrate forms. And the, the idea is just to try to integrate formally by uh, on, on the tropical side because, you, but then it's complicated because here you have two n variables. And so you cannot integrate uh, with respect to two n variables on n. So we, you remove uh, alpha of them and, and you try to integrate. The problem is that this will depends on the choice of coordinates. And so one needs to add uh, an additional structure on the tropicalization, which we call calibration and which corresponds to the weights of tropical geometry. And we also have a balancing condition. So um, from there, uh, uh, the machinery of currents begin as in analysis. We define the currents as a dual of compactly supported forms. Just by duality, we have differential operators and push forward because we can pull back forms. And because we can integrate forms, we have an integration current. And because we can also integrate forms on boundaries so on on subspace of some forms which have dimension n minus n minus one n can also be integrated, and so uh, this gives you different kind of integration. And as a matter of fact, we we have a Stokes formula. And uh, 
we have also uh, Poincaré Leon formula. For example, it makes sense to, to take if f is a neuromorphic function, it makes sense to look at logarithm of absolute value of f. This will naturally define a current. And if we take the d prime double prime of this current, we get the integration current uh, on the divisor of f. And uh, another formula which I like to show is that the analog in complex analysis of the formula that d prime d double prime of uh, of the of the this, this is exactly the potential for, for the disk of center zero and the radius r. And when you do a Laplacian of this function, you get zero outside of the disk, you get zero inside of the disk because uh, outside is uh, harmonic inside this constant, and you get something on the circle. And it's well known that it's uh, equilibrium measure of the, of the circle in complex analysis, so the integration current uh, on the circle of radius r. And in our context, you get we get something different. In some sense, the boundary of the disk of radius r is simply the Gauss point eta r, the one which was related to uh, the semi-norm uh, p d uh, zero r, and we get the integration on on this space. So it's an analog of, of this function in, in Fox square. So I've skipped my time over by more, already two minutes. So. Uh, I will just tell you what I wanted to, don't, don't uh, try to read this. So, uh, no, well, just to, I will show, it, show them, but in, uh, from this, once you have uh, forms and currents, you can define a matrix on line models just by copying the definitions from uh, analytic geometry. And those line models will have uh, curvature forms. And, uh, because of the poincare lelon formula, when you integrate products of curvature forms, uh, we get uh, the degree from algebraic geometries, uh, from algebraic geometry when the situation comes from algebraic geometry. Uh, what is more, uh, more interesting and, and more difficult is that when we take, when we start from a natural matrix, from a for matrix which are natural for, from algebraic geometry, but uh, given by models, like in our record of geometry, those metrics are not uh, smooth. They, they are corners, they are defined by some maximum of, of functions. And so when we take the, the chain form, we don't get a form, but a current. And for, for the same reason that uh, then in analysis, we can, we are able to, to define products of those currents and, uh, and to give formulas for, 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 the, for the products of the currents. And in fact, we recover exactly what is given uh, in our regular geometry uh, uh, by formulas which are natural from, from the point of view of geometry and which had allowed me uh, 15 years ago to define measures on, on Berkovich spaces. So here we don't, in the end, we don't have only measures, but we have, uh, uh, measures for metrized line models, but we have uh, forms and uh, of all types from, for, for these metrized line models. Uh, so also we, we are able to understand the positivity, we are able to understand the, the intermediate currents and the positivity. And so this is just a, the starting point of, a, of business. It, it promises to be useful and uh, we hope it will be. Uh, and uh, what is remarkable for us is that it has been used uh, in many works. Uh, uh, meanwhile, so our paper is not yet finished, but people have done interesting stuff with it. Uh, so, so for example, Gubler and Kuhneman uh, should, oh, oops. Uh, Gubler and Kuhneman have shown what happens. Something is making a lot of noise in my, uh, my earphones. So, um, Gubler and Kinnaman used it and together with uh, uh, other ideas from tropical uh, geometry to, to define uh, quite a full fledged oracle of geometry in an oracle setting. Uh, Liu and Mikami have shown a relation of the natural uh, cohomology groups that can be defined by these forms with char groups and, and K theory. Uh, it, it also appears um, more recently in a work by Ducro, Ruchonsky, and Leder, who showed that uh, Archimedean integrals 
naturally converge to uh, non-Archimedean intervals in the sense that I described. So uh, I think it's a last slide. There are a few three additional slides that are empty in order to be able to write something uh, if, if needed. So thank you very much for, for your attention. I'm sorry to have uh, be slightly over time.